the incomparable Sir Bobby Charlton. Simon's alongside uh, Martin and Newell this morning. Simon, I was on Talk TV this morning uh, at a very early hour, but I, I was explaining to the people there that as far as my dad was concerned, my late father, Robbie, it, it very, very occasionally he, was, he would come along with me somewhere because he wanted to meet somebody. And uh, Bobby Charlton was a guest in the studios of Scottish TV. You know where that is, Martin, of course, mm -hmm. in, in Glasgow by the Clyde. Then it was up at Cow Cadden's and um, Robbie said, can I come in? You know, Bobby Charlton's going to be in your studio. I'd love to meet him. And I remember after the evening news programme, he, he sat with my dad and gave him about half an hour and my father spoke about it for years. Mm. This was the draw that Sir Bobby was, wasn't it? Everybody knew of him. Everybody knew the kind of man he was and everybody would have loved to have spoken to him because of his demeanour. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he's a, he's now from a generation long gone and from a society that's changed so much and he represented so much of the good things in football. And there's still lots and lots, of course, lots of good things. And you look at, when I talk about Manchester United and this football club that has such legacy and iconography, and Bobby Charlton is seated right in the middle of it. I met him twice. I met him on a, an evening where he was doing a speech, a sporting dinner speech, and I met him in the ballroom at Manchester United when we played, when Palace played Man United in 2005. And he was just a very, just, hello, young man. How, how are you finding? Welcome to Man United. Um, and you don't really appreciate it. I was 35 years of age and I wasn't really paying that much attention to it, but I knew who I was talking to. And, of course, I remember my father, you know, loving, you know, Bobby Charlton and Bobby Moore and players of that ilk. And it's, and it's a much overused expression, but they don't make them like that. They don't make players and characters and individuals and football clubs that he was part of like that very often. Yes. Martin, you played against them. I, I I did, Jim. I I played against him. It's etched in my memory forever. Uh, December fourth, nineteen seventy one. Uh, six weeks earlier, I was a student at Queen's University. Suddenly, I'm thrust into this, and uh, I come on as a substitute. Bobby Charlton, George Best, and Dennis Law all playing for Manchester United at the time. Uh, and um, within about eight or nine minutes, I actually picked the ball up in the halfway line. It is actually in YouTube. You can get this, so I'm not making it up. And I burst past Bobby Charlton and I scored this goal against... Anyway, uh, obviously a fantastic moment for me, uh, the three legends playing in the, in the game. Uh, two months later, I, was, I met George Best personally for the first time in Hull. And I mentioned, the, uh, I mentioned me bursting past Bobby <laughs> Charlton. And he said, well, Bobby Charlton is 35 years of age. He said he's stopped chasing now for the last two <laughs> two years. So it was quite quite funny, but it was just a, a obviously a great moment for me. Bobby was at the end of his career, and I was uh, I was starting out, and just to be to be on the same pitch as him, Dennis Law and George Best was just a, 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 just a, a, like a, a the usual proverbial dream come true. Yeah, he was a graduate of the Manchester United Youth Academy. He played 758 games, scored 249 goals during 17 years as a Manchester United player and, of course, won the European Cup, three league titles and, and the FA Cup. Um, it's, it's, it's always a question at a time like this, Simon. Um, calls for a Sir Bobby statue outside Wembley. What is the best and most fitting way to immortalise legends of the game? I think they've already been immortalised. Mm. I think there already is a legacy for Bobby Charlton that... Um, will not be something that people forget. I mean, statues are always part of it, and then years come past, statues get turned into different things for different reasons. But his recognition within the game, I don't think is going to be diminished. And I think whichever way people want to to remember that, I mean, I, I know that Manchester United were opening a book of remembrance. I know that Man United will celebrate it because, you know, whatever Manchester United under the Glazers are or they aren't, they still know who their heroes were. They still know what defined certain aspects of this football club. Um, so whether that's statues or other forms of recognition, I don't know. Is there a statue at Old Trafford of Bobby Charlton already? I think there's one of the three of them. I think it's, yeah. it's that uh, Dennis Law, yeah. um, Best. George, George Best. Best. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes the, there is. And of course, Bobby Moore at, at, at Wembley. I mean, certain players transcend the sport itself, Martin. And I think Sir Bobby falls into this category, doesn't he? Do you know what? You, you get the feeling that having survived the Munich crash in, in 1958, that you, you almost felt as if he was destined to, for greatness then after that. And I think there, uh, you know, he's almost like a, a reticent legend in, in the sense that 
his lifestyle, probably in contrast at the time, and I'm talking about in the 60s to George Best, really, exactly. probably made it yeah. a really interesting. Here here you have a, a man almost taciturn in, in, in many aspects. No, I'm sure, listen, he never lacked self-confidence, Bobby Charlton, in the field of play. But as, as Simon mentioned, his, his demeanour, his whole, his whole, his attitude to football, he play the game, really think about this particular match and then be going home whereas George was probably on the way out at that time. And I meant, I mean, out. Yes. <laughs> I don't mean yeah. in the way out of finishing football, but it was just the contrast between the two. And I yeah. think that that was, uh, right. I think that that was um, made even greater during, during, the, during the period of, of greatness from both of them. Yes. Uh, I, I remember, so Bobby almost felt a sense of, a sense of guilt, Simon, that he'd survived the Munich air crash, where, where, where uh, of course, so many others didn't. Yeah, and I don't know if that put him back in terms of personality, but he regressed somewhat over the years because he he came over extremely shy, almost reluctant to be in the spotlight at any time. Well, I'm sure. I mean, you've got to remember the times that we were in. I mean, as Martin quite eloquently summed it up for 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 George Best, see Bobby Charlton, but you needed that alchemy, mm-hmm. that mix to make yes, this unique yeah. blend of this '68 yeah. side, this phenomenal side. And I think you're probably right because out of adversity, two things happen: people of real character rise to life and the challenges and they use adversity adversity as a catalyst and some people don't and in this instance bobby charlton did and and the 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 the, the culture of the man the culture of the football club the achievements the fact that the england national side can only point to that particular moment in 1966 which he was pivotal in specifically in the semi-final mm. and then you look at the 68 uh, european cup final against benfica and his contribution and then you look at the whole even going through to the World Cup in 1978, mm-hmm. where you see Bobby Charlton part of that framework that Coca-Cola were putting forward mm-hmm. to the World Cup and everything yeah. that went with it. Yes. And, you know, he was of a unique time yeah. and of a unique vintage and of a unique outlook. And there's something much more edifying and much more elegant about people. That, there's an old saying, isn't it, about money. Money talks and wealth whispers. Um, and in this instance, in football terms, I think Bobby Charlton whispered because he didn't need to roar. Absolutely. Yes, mm-hmm. you couldn't put it any better than that, Simon. Um, he really is a legend of the game. Um, a whole host of individual accolades, a Ballon d'Or, a Footballer of the Year, a World Cup Golden Boot winner, England's record goal scorer, Manchester United's record goal scorer, and United's leading appearance maker. Sir Bobby Charlton, who died at the weekend, aged 86. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.